Hey everybody, this is Pun Frugal Streamer, and I want to talk about live stream mixing with Voice Meter Potato because recently Elgato's come out with Wavelink to support their new microphones called the Wave, which they have two versions, Wave 1 and Wave 3. Both use Wavelink, which allows you to make a live stream mix from a bunch of different sources like comms and music and games and that sort of thing, and then also provide a separate monitor mix for you to have so that you don't have to listen to what your live stream is mixing to or listening to at the same level. A lot of people are like, well, I would love to be able to do that, but I don't want to have to buy a new microphone to do so because I'm happy with what I have. Well, let me show you how you can do that. So that's the first thing I want to do with this video is show you how can you do your own live stream mix and have your own monitor mix using a voice meter potato. Number two, I want to show you how you can do this for a dual PC application. That is one of the big questions with Wavelink. It's how do you do it for dual PC and you don't really have a way to do it unless you do a workaround. Voice Meter Potato, there's a few ways that we can accomplish this and I wanna show you how you can do that. So let's go ahead and get into the video. Okay, before we get into diving into Voice Meter and all this good, juicy stuff that I want to show you. This video is going to assume that you know a little bit about voice meter. So if you do not, I will provide two videos down below. First of all is a kind of a voice meter banana and it, this will work for voice meter potato. They're, they're other than the fact that potato really just has more channels. Um, it's basically the same thing for giving you a basic overview of what this program can do. So I'll let you watch that. And also, there is a video for virtual audio cables, and that's what I'm going to use partly in this video. I'm using virtual audio cable C and D, which is a personable pack that you can buy from v, uh, VB Audio. Now, if you go to their website right now, Voice Meter Potato, which includes Voice Meter Banana, by the way, if you buy the Voice Meter Potato package, um, at the lowest level is $8.33. And to buy a pack of cables, you can buy either the A and B pack or the C and D pack. And you can actually get just a regular virtual audio cable, one cable by itself for free. But the buy pack is $5. So you're looking at $13.33 to get a full mixer and cables. Lifetime license is yours and you're awesome. So go ahead and do that because um, I'm telling you, you will not be disappointed. It is a great program, very robust. It gives you tons of options, which I will show you some of what it can do here in just a second. So let's go ahead and get over to this gaming PC where I have Battlefield 5 running in windowed mode. It's producing an audio source. You cannot hear it right now. Um, but I also have music going to Spotify. So what I have, the way I have this set up, I have my microphone coming into physical channel one. This is my audio interface. It's USB coming in. I have Discord that is being patched to a virtual audio cable, cable D. And then the output of that cable is coming into channel number two. And then Spotify, I have patched to virtual cable C, which the output of that is then coming into channel three. Okay. To do that, to be able to connect like Spotify, because you can't actually go into Spotify and select a audio route source, you can do that under uh, sound settings and then app volume and device preferences. Here is uh, Spotify, for instance, and of course it is outputting to the cable C that I've selected. Uh, you can do that for a lot of sources, including browser audio and all that stuff you can send to a specific output. And that's what's so nice about the virtual cables. Uh, you could also use one of the three virtual inputs here in Voice Meter Potato. You, that's your option, whatever you want to do. But I also have my default playback audio for all of Windows sources coming into Voice Meter AUX VAIO input. All right, so this is where my default playback is. All right, so that's good to know. Now, what I've done is I've split between two outputs that I want my audio to output from. The B1 output, which is voice meter VAIO output, that's how it's labeled in Windows, and then B2, the voice meter VAIO aux output. All right. B1 is for my microphone, and that's what I, all I want it to be for. B2 is for my stream mix, everything else, game audio, Discord, music, 
browser audio, if you want to do that, is all going to be too, which I have browser audio set to be uh, VAIO3 input here. With that being said, this is how I have my audio split up. Now let's talk about setting up your own monitor. So the great thing about voice meter potato is it has bus mixes. All right. A bus mix is simply just a bus that you can use to set an output to a source. Uh, in the big mixer world and pro audio world, mixes are used mainly for monitors, uh, stage monitors, in-ear monitors. Um, there's a couple applications like actually for my church, I have a bus mix specific for my live stream where it sends a bus mix for my live stream and I can control all the sources separate in that. So voice meter potato allows you to do that. So what I have here is I am outputting this A1 output is my uh, headphones that is plugged into my uh, audio interface where my microphone is also plugged into. And that is the A1 output that I have selected here. And then whatever I want to monitor, I just turn on the A1 button in any of these channels. All right. Then what I want to do to so that I don't adjust the live stream mix, I just want to adjust my monitor mix, is I go over to the A1 output and I turn on the select button. And now this is your sub bus mix that you're now looking at. Um, it doesn't physically change per se on voice meter unless you actually change a level inside of your channel. So for here, Spotify, for instance, right now, if I turn it off, you can see that it is at unity on both the sub mix and the main mix. But by turning select on, I can now turn down this and I no longer can hear music in my headphones. It's gone. But you can see that it is still outputting. You can see it uh, on the uh, VU meter right here. Likewise, if I were to go over to the stream and I turn on my sub mix, my stream mix, you should now hear music. But I'm not hearing the music in my headphones because I've actually turned it down in the monitor mix, which is really awesome. So if I wanted to listen to it again, I just turn it back up. Okay. Likewise, if I if I turn this down like this and then I turn off the select and then I wanted to listen to the live mix, just left click on the channel and just change the audio just a little bit and it'll reset audio back to your headphones. So now I'm hearing music again. All right. So to get to the monitor mix, select the select button and then adjust your volumes as necessary. If I wanted to listen to my microphone, I can now listen. I'm hearing it in my headphones and I could turn it up and you can see it going a little louder in the VU meter, but you don't hear it increasing in volume on the stream, which is actually what you're hearing right now. So that's what's so good about it. I love monitor mix and use it. It's powerful. You can really use it for a lot of things and, you know, being able to turn down the music in your headphones for playing games like Battlefield 5, where you really want to hear footsteps, that sort of thing uh, is important. All right. So. We have that. Now, let's talk about the second thing I want to talk about is how to get this over to the stream PC. So right now I'm doing two things. I have B1 and B2 as my two outputs, one for my mic, one for the rest of the stream mix. Now, if you did not want to record your mic separate, and the, and the reason I'm doing this is specifically for this video, I want to have a separate channel for my microphone and a separate channel for the rest of the stream mix so I can edit it in the video. So that's what I've done here. So. B1 is outputting, B2 is outputting. And then what I'm how I'm doing is I'm sending them over VBAN. All right, VBAN is VB Audio Networks, what it stands for. To access it, just click on the VBAN button here at the top left. If it is blue like this, that means it, it is on. When you bring this window up, all you need to do is click on this button. When it turns this color blue and it says VBAN is on, it's on. And it, you know, it's, this is just your indicator. What I've done now is I have gone in here to outgoing streams and I have two channels set up. I have a bunch of channels set up, but for this video, just imagine that I have two channels. All right, so I have bus B1, which is my microphone. I've turned this button on. You can turn these on and off, by the way. Uh, I have this button on, the source is the B1 output. I've called it mic. Now keep in mind, this is case sensitive. so. Make sure that you match it, including spaces. If you put a space in something, you got to make sure that it's called that everywhere or else you're not going to get a good connection. But I've got this mic and I've inputted the IP address of my stream PC. To find that, you look at the top of the VBAN. In this case, this is my gaming PC uh, uh, IP address. 
you know, likewise, you would need voice meter on your stream PC and then you would open VBAN, get the IP address there and you'd be good to go. But so I've inputted the stream PC's IP there and I've got a green light, which means that it's now talking to the router. Okay, so that is good. Likewise, I've done the same for the B2 stream mix. Input it again, the IP address of the stream PC, and I have a green light that says that it's talking to your router, which is good. All right, so now let's switch over to the stream PC. All right, and let me move OBS. And this is now the stream PC, and this is voice mirror potato on stream PC. You can also use, if you don't want to have potato, you can also use banana for this. They both support VBAN. All right, so now on incoming streams, if everything is working right and you have everything connected in Windows Firewall, and this is key, Windows Firewall will block these streams. So if you're not seeing these, by right-clicking, you should get a list of incoming streams. If you're not seeing this, then you should go into Windows Firewall and whitelist voice meter. Okay, that is 99% of the time, that is what the issue is when you're not seeing incoming streams. All right, so easiest thing to do is right click and select the streams that you want. In case here I have stream mix and then I have mic and you can see both of those set up here. And when you get the green lights, that tells you that both PCs are talking with each other. Okay, so for the stream mix, I have set a destination to physical input channel three. And then for my mic, I have channel four. All right, so then you can see stream mix is here. This is channel three, mic is channel four. You can see the audio coming in. Everybody's happy, happy. All right, now you need to output these. So I have outputted this to the B2 VAIO aux, and then the stream mix is going to VAIO three. Now you can go into OBS and you can set an input capture source for your audio. And here I have the stream mix and then I have the mic. As you can see, these are two audio input capture sources and I've selected those outputs from voice meter. And you can now hear, of course, the audio and everything. So I'm going to now switch back over to the game PC and you should hear music. You should hear game audio from Battlefield 5. All right, that's all coming over the B2. My microphone is coming over the B1. That is the first way that you can get audio from your game PC to your stream PC. All right, and probably the hardest way of the ways I'm going to show you. The next way that you can do this is very simple. All right, so I'm going to mute the stream mix on OBS so you don't hear it. All right, the second way that you can do this is you can use a capture card. Now, if you have an Elgato or an Aver Media capture card, you're going to be using the HDMI output from your game PC's GPU, and you can select this as a physical output, and it will show up as an NVIDIA high definition audio device in the list. In the case here, I have a monitor hooked up. I do not have a capture card, but for the purposes of this video, they're essentially the same way. It's just an HDMI cable that's going out, and then instead of selecting like the B2 to output all your stream mix, you would just select the physical output. In this case here, it's A2. That I would select to whatever, you know, whatever sources you want to go to your stream mix, you would turn the A2 on, okay? And then that will feed that HDMI cable. And then all you would do is your video capture device source in OBS Studio. You wouldn't even have to worry about voice meter on the stream PC. So that's the second way to do it. Another way to do it, and the way that I am doing it normally, is I like to capture my video and audio using in the eye. You're seeing the video right now of voice meter potato and my game that's in windowed mode. That is in the eye that's capturing my video. I use a program called scan converter. It's a free program. It's part of the NDI toolkit that you can download from new tech slash uh, or Sierra. I think Sierra bought them out. I'll provide a link down below where you can download that directly. It will install both scan converter. It will install the NDI run times. You don't have to worry about anything. And then when you install it and you start up scan converter, what scan converter will do. And if you see it, I've pinned it to my uh, task bar down here. Well, what it'll do is it'll run in the background. And what you do is right click on the icon inside of your system tray and then go to audio source and select the output that you have chosen in voice meter to send your stream mix to. In the case here, it's B2. 
So this is voice meter aux VAIO output. Now I have done that. And in the NDI source that I have built, uh, made inside of OBS Studio, uh, which you would need to install the NDI plugin, I can provide a link to that too for OBS Studio. Streamlabs OBS also supports it. It's already built in. When you install Streamlabs OBS, it's already there. When you do the NDI source, it's super easy. The audio comes over with your video and you're now hearing the mix of the of the different stream sources that I want to go to my live stream, which is really awesome. Again, I'll bring up the game and you should hear the game. If somebody were in Discord talking to me, you would hear Discord audio. It's really just a simple way of doing it. And that's really it. That's all the ways that you can use this for a dual PC. Now, for those of you that may be listening to this and have the Wave microphone and the Wave link, these ways that I have shown you how to do this will also work for that. Uh, so I would I would prefer, actually, if you were using a capture card to use the HDMI output, uh, you could use voice meter for that. But really, the NDI really is the easiest way to go, I think. Uh, likewise, OBS Studio, if you have that on your game PC, you can also send NDI inputs using OBS Studio. That's another way to do that. Personally, for me, scan converter is pretty simple. And it really doesn't use any more resources CPU-wise than uh, OBS Studio does. So I just prefer it because it's simple. And you can actually send two audio sources over Scan Converter. All right, guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, I didn't want to make this video a super crazy tutorial on voice meter. I wanted to show you how can you could use it to monitor your own mix and without deafening yourself, without and without affecting the live stream mix. Because that's really the intriguing thing that the Wavelink has given us. Uh, with the Wave microphone, but I know just like a you, I don't want to go buy a new microphone if I have this one. I love this microphone. It's actually, in my opinion, probably a better sounding microphone than the Wave microphone itself. But that Wavelink software is really good. And that's a really good selling point for that microphone is that it also gives you a mixer. But for those of you that don't want to, don't want to invest in a microphone, this is another option for you is using voice meter to build your own monitor mix. Or you can go spend $400 on a Go, X, Go XLR. Okay. So anyway, that video helped you out. If it did, make sure you hit a like, subscribe to the channel. Hit the notifications. You'll know when I have a video that goes live. Other than that, make sure you check me out on my socials. I am on Twitter. I use Facebook. Um, and I would love for you to join the uh, TFS Discord community. That's really where you can ask for help. Reach out to me if you're having issues with anything and share your live stream, share your YouTube videos, talk with other streamers and beast community support for those that may run into problems that you may have run across in the past and you now know how to fix. Other than that, guys, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Have a great rest of your week. We'll see you later.